well hello there everyone welcome to morning coffee thank you so very much for tuning in so here we are guys um this is most likely going to be well let's just say it this way this is going to be the last morning coffee here in this space yes so um this is going to be a general energy reading for your wednesday your hump day may 27th 2020 please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid so just because this is a reading dated for the 27th of may that does not mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you then then that is the message for you in that moment um oh also keep in mind that this is a general reading so take what resonates leave what doesn't so here it is guys it, um it's been crunch week for me so that's why i haven't been doing morning coffee um but the movers are coming friday so um i'm at a point now where i can really start breaking down my desk get my crystals packed up um you know get some odds and ends put together because the movers come on friday and i will be in puerto rico as of well, let's be safe and say 3 p.m. on June 2nd. And I am very, very excited. However, I am going to have to go away for a while. Um, I'm, I'm going to need to take some time to get settled. I mean, we've kind of discussed this already, but just a little recap. I'm going to need to take some time to get settled. I'm not going to have internet access right away. So um, doing readings um, is going to be difficult. So definitely... No personal readings for some time until I can get that squared away. I'm going to try and get some collective stuff out as much as I can. Um, most likely going to be for a lot of Patreon, Patreon um, subscribers, a lot of Patreon stuff. Um, I'm most likely going to be focusing there. If you're not a member yet and you feel like you want to get in on it, then go right ahead. The link is in the, the description box below. PayPal, no, I'm sorry. Um, um, what is it? Uh, Patreon.com slash Divine Conversations. But yeah, guys, I'm moving. It's real. It's happening. It's happening. Finally. It's been a long road to get here because I'm going to be honest with you. I knew when I got down to Puerto Rico and um, like I got there that day, I knew and I saw the, because I saw the apartment I'm moving into the day I got to Puerto Rico. And I kind of knew I was moving there, but I didn't want to say anything about it. And I definitely didn't want to, you know, jump too quickly. Um, but yeah, I've known this whole time <laughs> that I was moving down there. I just didn't want to say it too early, but here we are. Oh man. So anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to miss you guys. I was set up like the fact that I'm gonna have to take such an extended amount of time away from readings but also I don't like the fact of having to get set up only to break down completely just to move around you know what I mean like I'd rather be settled and ready to go so I can just keep up with it and be consistent it's gonna be a minute before we get there but we're on our way kids yeah okay so anyway I definitely wanted to get a last a last at least morning coffee session because that's been such a, a beneficial series here on divine conversations um and you guys appreciate it so much and i wanted to show my appreciation to you guys for you know following along for so long i mean i've been doing morning coffee for a year now and it's still popular so i'm incredibly grateful for it i love that you guys love it i love doing it it's so much fun so i definitely wanted to get a last morning coffee for you guys and a last morning coffee in the space because like i'm gonna have to break all this down i'm natalie's taking my plants and i'm not gonna see my crystals for a while you know but anyway let's get into this and see what we've got for the collective today hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our wednesday our hump day may 27th 2020 
Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm going to give this five shuffles. Shuffle this up real good. One. Oh, as I'm shuffling, let me give you this little side note. So don't mind the manicure, but however, this is two. I do want to ask you guys something. So what I did with my, look, see, see, it's all janky. It's all screwed up. But what I used this time was that dipping powder. Natalie got a, um, a kit and we used it and I did it for the first time. And honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. I thought I wanted to get use that stuff. This is shuffle number three. I, I, I saw Natalie get it once when she was getting a manicure. And I watched the, the, the manicurist do it, and I was like, wow, that stuff lasts a long time, huh? The, the dipping powder. I should invest in that. I should look into it. And so Natalie got a kit for her birthday, and so we did it. She and I did it together. And, I mean, it was only the first time that I did it, so I see flaws in it, and I know it deserves another another test run. But I don't know how I feel about it because it's super, super thick. It always gets caught in my hair, and I just don't know if it's worth the hassle, especially if it's going to chip like this. Cause I just, cause I did this a few days ago and it's already like chipping like crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, why not? I normally use Sally Henson. Why not just stick with the, the, the Sally Henson gel stuff and deal with it chipping every so often. You know what I mean? I don't know if this is really worth the investment. So I say all that to say, if any of you have used the dipping powder manicure set, but like done it yourself, not had someone else do it for you, done it yourself. I'd really like to know what your experience was with it because again, I don't know how I feel about it. Okay, anyway, so moving on. This is number four. Oh geez, oh geez, okay. All right, last shuffle, number five. Ooh, I just got really, really warm. Okay, so the angels just got here or guides or something, spirits here. All right, it's time to go skis. So, what's going on today? What is this last conversation we're gonna have for a hot minute? What do you guys wanna talk about? What do you guys wanna talk about? Ooh, well, you sure wanna talk about a lot. Okay. Overall energy, ooh, take this one too. All right, overall energy we have, wow. This is um, judgment, isn't it? Yes, card number 20, judgment. Review the past and the present so you can plan a bright new future. Understanding your life purpose, releasing judgments of yourself and others. Okay, so this really does feel, I mean, this is kind of perfect for where I am. And maybe this is perfect for the collective right now because Whoa. this this moment this moment for us as a collective humanity wise is a big time to close out old cycles all right so this what i feel like with the renewal or with judgment here this is definitely an energy of looking back looking at the past looking at what has been in an effort to really get get like a last look you know what i mean it's like a, a a last look a last understanding a last overview yeah a last overview of of what it is you've been experiencing where you've been in your life right now or so up until this point um the closing out of the chapter this to me just you know you know what this this renewal energy or judgment here it kind of feels very similar to a past life review or like when you cross, when, when like you, when you die or when you pass over, when you cross back over into the spirit world and you go through that moment where you, you review your life, like you go over your life with your higher self and you, you review things, you come to terms with things and you start to plan your new adventure, your next lifetime and all that stuff. That's kind of what this feels like here with renewal. Okay. Um, there might be some confusion. Ten of Wands, Seven of Cups, and and but ultimately, what I feel like here with the Seven of Cups and the Ten of Wands, or Seven of Summer and, and Ten of Spring, um, it, it's it. I don't feel like you're holding on to these burdens anymore. 
I feel like these are things that are releasing from your life, the burdens, the obstacles, the struggles, whatever it is that has hold, held you back, any sort of confusion. I, it's interesting, and, and maybe this is the energy that's coming through in the rest of the cards too, because there's a number of cards here, but I feel like these energies right here, the Seven of Summer and the Ten of Spring, these are things you are releasing, you're letting go of, you're releasing the confusion, and if you're not gaining any sort of clarity in the situation, you're releasing your need to find or have clarity, it's like the clarity that you have right now is just fine with you, you, you don't, you, you're really... I mean, Spirit just said you're settling. Some of you might be settling, but take that with a grain of salt. I don't think they mean it like you're settling where like you're compromising or you're giving in or something like that. I mean, it feels like you're settling into the reality of it. It is what it is in this moment. Not going to try and change it. Not going to try and define it. Not going to try and, 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 and do anything other than just let it be what it is. You know what I mean? That's the type of confusion I feel like you're releasing. And if you haven't really, like I said, if you haven't really gained any sort of clarity or, or closure even, I don't think you're seeking it. I don't think you're looking for it. And it, actually that seeking of that 1111, so the seeking of that closure or clarity might be what is represented by the 10 of wands also, overburdened. I feel like it's um, something that's really just not worth it. And you're finally in a place to look back and recognize just how not worth the effort it is any longer. And if you're not looking back to realize, you're looking back to understand that, yeah, you made the right decision in, in letting that go and moving forward, okay? We have a number of cards here. I want to start with these two. We have the Six of Cups and the Six of Swords. You know what? I'm just going to take all of them. Six of Cups. Six of Swords. Ooh, we have the Three of Swords in reverse. You know what? I am, I'm going to turn all of these upright. We have the Three of Swords. We have the Eight of Cups, the Emperor, the Tower, and the Queen of Cups. Very good. This is very good, you guys. I mean, this is very good, you guys. Okay, so... Part of this energy of releasing the past experience, um, releasing some sort of confusion or releasing burdens here, this is the energy that's driving that, the emperor. Because it feels like you've come to a place right now where you've had enough life experience um, in order to step into the emperor energy. What is the emperor energy? Master of one's own domain, in control disciplinarian, uh, focused, driven, honorable, uh, family-oriented when, when positively aspected, somewhat compassionate when positively aspected, but more logical than, uh, than empathic. Here is that balancing energy, the Queen of Cups. So you're in this very strong-willed, like, doing it for myself, <laughs> sisters, I'm doing it for themselves. <laughs> Wow, that was funny. Okay. Um, I mean, if that applies to you, it applies to you. And if you're not a woman, then don't worry about it. It was just a joke. <laughs> but um, being in this powerful place to make some sort of executive decision for yourself, that was that's a really popular term for us collectively right now, making some sort of executive decision for yourself. But, but the fierceness, the ferocity, the the um the drive the focus the maybe sometimes the harshness the criticalness the ability to to completely cut out all emotion and make logical decisions is tempered by the emotional awareness of the queen of cups whether you're a man or a woman this doesn't matter um the queen of cups is representing that feminine part the feminine to the masculine there while yeah the masculine the divine masculine we can say is coming forward within you right now the feminine is still in the background guiding leading the ship okay so i kind of see the emperor as maybe like the face of this new movement movement of yours or this new direction you're moving in the empress the counterpart to the emperor energy is here. I am seeing the emperor and the enter emperor. I'm sorry, the emperor and the empress energy here. However, the empress is coming through specifically 
as the Queen of Cups because emotional stability, compassion, empathy, understanding, willingness to understand, willingness to be compassionate, not just for yourself as you move forward because you are in a compassionate energy that is allowing you to move forward in this way to begin with, but also for others as you move forward because there is a level of understanding between this combination of the Emperor and the Queen of Cups. There is a level of understanding that this, while this transition might be right for you, you might be really excited about it, it's not always going to be that <clears throat> exciting, we'll say, for everyone else around you. There are going to be some people that are butthurt. There are going to be some people that are just concerned. You know, they're, 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 they're concerned for your safety. Not to say that you're getting into any danger or trouble, but, you know, you're taking matters into your own hands. You're doing things your own way. You're blazing your own trail. And sometimes people get worried about that. That's fine. There's nothing you can do about that. You're aware of that, but also you're aware of their emotional turmoil surrounding it so it's not like you're trying to do anything overt be into in someone's face too much there's a there's a strong level of responsibility here emotional responsibility emotional maturity between the emperor and the queen of cups in this situation okay now you have experienced quite a hell of a lot of life experience here three of swords is kind of being clarified in this reading by the, the life's experience card. Ultimately though, and this is what I think you being in this Emperor Queen of Cups energy, I think you understand exactly, maybe, or, or maybe not exactly, but you, you have a sufficient amount of understanding of what this life experience has been attempting to teach you over this period. I'm not going to sit here and presume to say that you know everything about everything that I, I'm not going to say that you, you, you got all the information, you got all the lessons, but I'm not going to say some things maybe didn't slip by you, but at this point, you have sufficient amount of understanding and life experience underneath your belt to, in essence, be a tower moment. Cause that's kind of, I kind of feel like that's what's happening here. Um, between the, well, Look, <laughs> yeah, between all of them. I mean, I was going to list. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of it. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Between the Six of Swords, the Eight of Cups, and the Emperor here, I feel like, um, yes, this is a tower moment, but I feel like you are a tower moment right now. Like, your existence is a tower moment right now. And that's a good thing because not only are you shaking things up for yourself and your immediate family, your Im immediate surroundings, I feel like you're shaking some shit up on an ancestral level too. Some of you are at least. Six of Cups. There is a level of getting back to the past, getting back to who you truly are. There's a level of nostalgia. There's also a level of following your heart and letting your inner child lead the way as you make this transition. The Six of Swords, you actually could be moving just like I am. I, I, there are a lot of readers out here on YouTube over the last two, three months that have been going through the process of moving. Like it's a little, it's a little uncanny, you know? And so I'm sure there's a lot of, a lot of you out there. And even some of you said, as I've been talking about it, that you're moving too. So like, but see where you're moving to, or at least where you're trying to go, your, your aim, your focus is to go somewhere where you are happy. Six of cups going somewhere or being in a place or doing something, moving towards some next phase in your reality that brings you joy, that is connected to your inner child. There has been a lot of inner child healing we've been doing over, over the last few months on a collective level. And for a lot of us, this next, whatever we move forward towards in this next phase in our life is going to have to have some sort of resonance with our inner child, or it is not going to work well in our lives, or it's not going to stay around long it may even turn into a really painful situation. And that's not things that we want to experience any longer. So if it's not in alignment with our inner child, then it's probably not going to work. It's probably not going to work out. And you're going to, if you have been avoiding doing your inner child healing, honey, get on that. Because honestly, I'm going to be 100% real with you guys right now. If it weren't for the wonder and excitement and freedom, and I might start crying, of the inner child. If it weren't for my connection with my own inner child, if it weren't for the work that I've done to heal a lot of the ways that my own 
my inner child has been ripped to shreds <laughs> in some ways, right? If I hadn't worked towards healing that, I, there would be no enthusiasm to be had. What would there be? What would be? There would be nothing to be enthusiastic about, because all I would see is everything that my adult eyes see in the world, rather than what the child within me sees about the world. Healing and working with and cultivating a relationship with your inner child, it might seem cliche, but guys, it's one of the strongest tools you will ever have in your belt. Okay? And I feel like a lot of, a lot of the, the pain and the torture and the heartbreak that you've been through has also helped you to strengthen that bond or helped you be in a position to strengthen that bond with your inner child. Okay. Wow. So it's interesting how the, the cards have fallen here um, because this is, this is exactly where they need to be. You have, um, you have the seven of cups, which is confusion, illusion, maybe living in a fantasy land. And you could have been living in a fantasy land um, just by trying to make something work that time and time again you were shown it was not ever going to work, right? So you have the Seven of Cups there, which I feel like is very much Seven of Cups, Ten of Wands, the burden of all that. They're very much intertwined with each other. But that led you to, well, it through Heartbreak, Three of Swords, it led you to start going within. It led you to start connecting with your inner child. And that might have been, and see, Spirit is sneaky like this. It might have been because you just wanted to feel good again. You didn't want to think about all of the madness, the bullshit, the fuckery, the backstabbing, the tomfoolery, the destruction, the lying, the cheating, the stealing, the, all that shit. You didn't want to think about that. You just wanted to feel good. You wanted to feel happy. So what did you do? You went in and sub and and, and I don't know how this slipped past, past your conscious awareness for some of you, but you went within and you went directly to your inner child and you just started doing things that made you laugh. You were being silly. You were playing games. You were running around. You were doing anything to distract yourself from the, we'll call it, I'll put it in air quotes, reality of the situation, which the only real reality of the situation you needed to see was the fact that it was not anywhere that you wanted or needed to be to begin with. You were taking on responsibilities or beliefs or expectations of other people allowing them to confuse you into something that is inauthentic three of swords so you see how spirit is really sneaky they'll put us through these situations covertly and push us in a certain direction to get us to connect six of cups to then say i'm going to move on i'm not happy here eight of cups i'm not happy here this is not fulfilling me there's something more out there for me so I'm going to go find it, which means I'm going to have to leave the past behind and make the executive decision to say, I'm going to go do this now. And thus, you have how your pain and miss, we'll call it, quote, misfortune has led to some major life experience. And luckily for you, you seem to have remained quite compassionate throughout. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like you're going to take any shit from anybody, the emperor. But you still do. But you still have a heart, don't you? Good for you. Because not everybody comes out of it with a heart. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, cool. What do I want to do next? I want to start clarifying some things. Um, the first thing I wanted to kind of clarify was the Three of Swords here bit. Bit. Hmm. Where do we want to start? But I think I want to start with the Ten of Wands. I, actually, I think I want to do both of them together. Actually, let's let's do this. 
we're going to do this. We're going to do the three of winter, the ten of spring, and the seven of summer all together. Yeah, we're going with that life experience because because I. I I want to get you a little bit of clarity here, but ultimately all of this energy here is what has helped to create the life experience to put you in a position to be in emperor mode. And this, and I just want to make it clear, guys, this emperor mode that I'm picking up on for you, it doesn't feel like um, you're being overly demanding or overly controlling, but you are taking however you want to phrase it you're taking your power back you are um taking the bull by the reins you you are you're making an executive decision you're taking responsibility ah there it is you're taking responsibility for your own happiness and well-being the Emperor and the Queen of Cups. For your own happiness and well-being, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, you are... Oh, shoot. What did I just say? Whatever. You get it. So, let's get a little bit more clarity on what has led up to this. Or at least, maybe some... Mm. Let's just look let, let's just look into this a little deeper and see what comes out and then we'll we'll discuss from there. Okay. Alrighty. So three of swords, ten of wands, seven of cups, and the tower. What else can you tell us about this for us, please, spirit? Well shit. Justice, the five of cups, the high priestess, wow. The Eight of Wands in reverse. The King of Wands. Okay. Oh, wow. With the sun. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. So what I'm seeing, some of you are looking at the Eight of Wands in reverse and saying, ooh, that's not so good. Actually, it is quite good. What I'm, what I'm picking up on with the Eight of Wands in reverse is you putting a stop to something. No longer continuing with the momentum um, or literally stopping it like stopping it in its tracks and saying no more okay um whatever has hurt you whatever you feel like you've lost five of cups all is not lost here there is justice being served for you and you may not necessarily know how it's going and that's what i'm getting with the high priestess you know justice is being served in your life right now because you have been doing the work let's look at this real quick you've been doing the work to get into direct alignment with what it is you truly desire, what it is you truly want. Okay, I'm definitely seeing this King of Wands energy as a reflection of the Emperor. Okay, so you may, but the thing about it is, you may not know exactly how justice is going to be served in your life, but I'm hearing it's going to be in a big way, a really big way, because of all the work that you've done. Because of all the soul searching and getting in alignment and, tr and, and, and trusting in yourself, believing in yourself, believing in your intuition, believing in your desires, believing in your heart, believing in your higher self, not allowing anyone to tell you what you can or cannot do with your life, who you can or cannot be. And now, and thus, thus, because you have gotten, because you've, you've learned the life experience. You've gotten to the point where all of this pain and this strife and the turmoil here, it taught you something. And now the sun is shining on you. And justice is being served. Damn, y'all. Wow. All right, cool. So with that said, um, I want to just, uh, let's just clarify this stuff here. Because this is all the good stuff. You have the Six of Swords, the Six of Wands, the Eight of... I'm sorry, no. The Six of Swords, the Six of Cups, the Eight of Cups, the Emperor, and the Queen of Cups. Let's just look a little bit deeper. If, see if there's anything else this energy wants to say to you. What does this energy want you to know? Page of Swords in Reverse, the Eight of Swords, the Ten of Swords... Whoa. With the Ten of Pentacles. Swords. Yes, swords. Just swords. 
Um, you guys, I feel like somebody's watching you. Uh, okay, there be there there are there are individuals around you that are watching you leave, that are watching you make this transition, and they can't say jack shit to you about it. They, y'all, they can't say a word. They can't say a damn thing. There is nothing that anybody can say or do right now to stop what's happening. Because what is happening is happening because the old cycle is coming to an end. The lesson has been learned. Ten of Pentacles. You are finally, yes, finally, says the Ten of Swords. You are finally graduating from this. It's time to move on, honey. And they and somebody knows this. There are people around you that know this. And I'm sure they I'm sure they've got some choice words for you. In some cases. I'm not saying all of the, everybody's situation is like rough and tumble and 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 narcissistic and nasty and mean. There could be a situation. I mean, it, it anything that they could say right now to you, or would say to you right now to get to 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 I don't know to try and change your mind, to try and clear the air, to try and have a last word. I don't know what whatever. It's pointless. It's futile. Because it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change the reality of the situation now. And it's definitely not going to change the past. And so thus, caught between a rock and a hard place, page of swords. I want to say something. I want to tell you. I want to reach out. I want to say something. But I can't. I'm stuck. I'm bound by the circumstances of the past, this says. But that's cool. Because for you, you're, put, you're putting an end to it. Putting an end to it. I want to... I want to get, I want to go a little bit deeper with this then. But see, I know, I feel like, see, here's the thing. Some of you might already know this. Some of you might be very well aware of this. Queen of Cups and the Emperor. The Queen of Cups is, out of all four of the queens, she's the most psychic. Strongest, at least. So you probably are well aware of the feelings around, of the people around you, which might actually only help you be more compassionate. I mean, it's this. This is very much an energy, guys. Of look, I, I know I have to go in this direction, says the emperor. But that doesn't mean I don't feel. Says the queen of cups. No, it, it, and I might be in a position or in a state of mind right now where I'm so fed up with this this circumstance that I really don't ha want to have to feel anything anymore. But I still do. <laughs> and the, you know what? With the emotional maturity that you've come into, you, you're probably well aware that that's not going to change. And you know, you're like, you know what? That's fine. Can we just move on? Can we just move forward, please? <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. Okay, but I want to look a little deep. And I, I want to look a little bit deeper into this. We got that Ten of Swords. The Page of Swords is reversed. The Eight of Swords is upright. But also keep in mind that the Ten of Pentacles was at the bottom of the deck, okay? I know this looks kind of scary, but it's really not that bad. But I want to look a little deeper. What else can you tell us about this energy here? Ooh. Oh, shit. Take this one. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Why is this happening? Oh, boy. All right. Well, look, now we've got the moon here. This is another person. Uh, this energy that's coming through here, um, this is the energy of someone else that was in your life. Someone that was in your life in the past. It's probably someone that was part of the circumstance or the situation that you're rising above or moving your way out of. But here, look, we have, we have the Emperor in reverse now, and that fell out on the page of swords in reverse. So yeah, there, okay, so there are, there are some individuals out there that are, um, that are facing their own shadow side right now. Because the actions of this emperor in the past is what led you to this circumstance of justice needing to be served in the current energy and also off in the future, okay? Um, it's the actions and maybe even the judgment of this emperor energy here that caused you even or someone else to go within and do some soul searching and build their own self-confidence, okay? But it's the actions of this emperor in reverse here that have led to the circumstances that you see in front of you right now. The Seven of Pentacles. 
whether this is a boss, a partner, a husband, a wife, even doesn't matter, um, a, a lover, a romantic interest, a twin flame, it doesn't matter. This emperor, the actions of this emperor are this, this individual is very controlling, very conceited, very sure of himself, very full of himself, tries to get the upper hand in all ways, shapes, or forms, may even do it in some underhanded ways. An emperor in reverse lacks honor and commitment. An emperor in reverse lacks honor and commitment, and that's how this person acted. And thus, a comeuppance is upon them. Seven of Pentacles, you reap what you've sown. And so, this individual might be really activated right now. Knight of Wands. And might be coming at you with some mess, like, how dare you stand up for yourself, X, Y, and Z? How dare you defy me? How dare you go off on your own? How dare you leave me behind? Who the hell do you think you are? But that's when you fire back and you're like, um, actually, I'm the Emperor Upright. I know exactly who I am. And I see you for who you are. And I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do what's right for me. And for some of you, you are moving forward specifically so that you cannot enable this person any longer. Because that's what a real, mature, responsible emperor energy would take note of. And, and the emperor is the disciplinarian. If anyone is going to enable their children, it's the empress. The emperor? Oh no. Oh no, no. Oh no. Mm -mm. Especially if whatever is being enabled is destructive, right? But wouldn't, wouldn't enabling automatically denote destruction? I don't know. That's an interesting concept. Let's discuss. Anyway, <laughs> so you have someone here that could be coming at you with some mess and they're being really immature about it. Page of Cups. Or they're trying to reconcile in some way but quite frankly i think you need to ignore this four of swords retreat not respond not reply not engage stay silent remain in your peaceful state because you do not want to stir up any more mess okay and like i said i feel like this person is being faced with their own shadow I feel like in some circumstances, what you guys are dealing with are in, uh, is a situation where now the tables have turned and you've taken, you've taken control over the situation and, and your actions are providing this emperor in reverse here, a front and center view of their own destructive tendencies or their own darkness. Um, not i, I want to I, spirit just said something that they want all of us to really try our best to understand when i just mentioned darkness someone's own darkness i'm not i'm not talking about you need to eradicate your darkness no i'm very much about balancing the dark with the light so this is not this is not finding your or being aware be, being made aware starkly aware for some of you of your darkness to just eradicate it to become some love and light guru that just like just throws love bombs everywhere and dev never feels any sort of darkness or negativity absolutely not this is a, a uh, this is a bird's eye view spirit is saying oh that's good or front and center view of one's own darkness and destructive tendencies so that they can get them integrated so that they can balance themselves out because if you remember the sun came out before and the sun came out up here for you for this person that is walking well actually this is you well the sun came out for the illumination surrounding making the change and getting centered within yourself and now the moon is here talking about this individual on the other side of the equation whomever or whatever it is that you're leaving behind that is negatively aspected that's in the darkness or the shade and has the opportunity is being faced with and 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 i'm gonna be honest with you guys with this knight of wands knight of swords energy they might be being faced with it but that doesn't mean that they're handling it well, that doesn't mean that they're taking a look at it. That doesn't mean that they're taking this opportunity to see what's actually really in front of them. But that is why you need to disengage. Because at, 
because you cannot make that make them see that for them and the more that they fight against whatever it is is going on here the harder it's going to be for them to face their ego here so there's really nothing you can do you just have to let them spin their wheels you're just going to have to let the universe take control of that because remember just like the universe was sneaky with you to get you to go within and change and close out this toxic cycle, the universe can be just as sneaky with someone else. You don't have to worry about that. The universe has got it under control. Yeah? Cool. Okay. So, with all of that said, I want to get a closing message from Spirit from the Tarot just some guidance here moving forward and then we're going to close this out with oracle guidance from the Gaia Oracle yes yield alright cool last shuffle alright spirit so what closing advice do you have for us here Oh, look at that! The moon, the ten of pentacles. Huh. Gee. An end to the darkness, maybe? Sure think so, because then you've got the hanged man, the six of wands, judgment, and oh, the five of pentacles. What? <laughs> oh, and you have the two of cups at the bottom of the deck. Some of you are Russian, or maybe... I don't want to say rushing because I don't feel like you're trying to do this, but I want, I will say you are moving quite quickly into a relationship, into a, a, the next phase in your life, into the next big thing for you, into the next big relationship. Just throwing that out there. Two of cups <laughs> is at the bottom of the deck. And, and, and it just, that's, that's just saying to me very, very, very loudly that um, a relationship is coming. And what I'm getting with that is the work you've been doing up until this point has been preparing you for that relationship to come through. Because you're closing out the dark cycles. Look, the moon with the ten of pentacles, judgment, six of wands, the hanged man, a change in perspective when it comes to fear and lack. Why... Uh, Damn, you guys. Learning the lesson. Graduate. This is lit. Okay. All right. Cool. Here it is right here. Here it is right here. You want any, do you want some official, some, an official spread or set of cards to say you're being called to graduation? Here it is. The hanged man, the ten of pentacles, judgment, and the six of wands. Hanged man is the energy of finally receiving sufficient amount of change in perspective to then say okay i've learned this lesson now to then the universe says congratulations you are ready to graduate and then here you are as the six of wands in your cap and gown walking down the aisle to get your diploma Congratulations. I kind of want to cry. I feel like I <laughs> I feel like a parent watching my children <laughs> watching my kids graduate college or some shit. <laughs> but that but like that must have hit some of you. Because as soon as I said it like that, that's when I was like, "Whoa. Holy moly." And I kind of like I kind of I kind of want to cry, and it's not because of sadness it's like relief it's happiness it's like holy shit man we did it you guys <laughs> oh my god i am crying we did it guys we did it wow <laughs> whoa i didn't expect that you guys we did it <laughs> 
wow Woo. okay wait no um i need a second because i like i really am like y you can't really see it it's not like i'm tearing or anything but like i am really getting choked up right now this is we did it you guys <laughs> we did it i'm really proud of us <laughs> oh man that's like really whoa okay no oh, there they go there they go. Okay, here they here come the tears. <laughs> you guys must be crying too. Some of you out there are crying too. I know it. I can feel it. Oh my god. I we're like we're in a huddle right now. We're in a big like we're actually <laughs> You wanna know what, what I'm seeing right now for some of us? We're kind of like in this big big group huddle, just kinda of like slightly ugly crying. <laughs> Just slightly, just slightly ugly crying, you know. There's no NBD. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. Congratulations to us. Okay, so let's close this out then. <sighs> Gaia Oracle. So... I don't know if you guys know this about me yet, but I am a huge, huge, huge Lady Gaga fan. And Rain On Me, this is the latest song. By the way, the album comes out on the 29th to, on Friday. So mark your calendars now. Like the 29th can't come fast enough. And it's not just because the movers are coming for me. It's because Chromatica comes out and I'm like shitting my pants over it. <laughs> but... The song Rain On Me is really playing, is so perfect. And if you haven't heard it, guys, I don't know, go check it out. There are a lot of mixed reviews about it. I fucking love it. Like, I, I, I can't get enough of it. But it's really perfect right now. I'd rather be dry, but at least I'm alive. Rain on me, rain, rain. Yes? I mean, it's so perfect for this situation. And so it was just playing in my head, and I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to share that with you. Last shuffle. All right. What do we got? Closing message, please, spirit. Ooh, there it is right there. Ooh, two of them. All right. All right. I told you guys, love is coming. You have card number 42. Sacred mother. I'm sorry. Sacred earth mother. A message of love. And then you have card number seven. Goddess of creation. Transformation, creativity, and wholeness. I'm going to read both of these, but I'm going to start with card number seven. And please don't mind that I'm shaking. I drank a cup of coffee on an empty stomach. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. <sighs> Goddess of creation. It's time for you to chill out and let go of rigid and fixed ideas. Relax and take time out to just be. You are really... You really have been trying too hard lately and are taking things far too seriously. This has blocked your creativity and caused your energy levels to be low. You probably tell yourself that you don't have time to relax, but you must make the time. Make this a priority and you will find that an interesting transformation takes place. Your creativity will increase and you will feel revitalized by a newfound sense of purpose and inspiration. Your mind may be telling you that relaxation is a futile waste of time, yet the opposite is true. Relaxation will sh slow down your thoughts and open your heart. It is fuel for the soul that will have a positive flow on effect for your entire being. We got this card last week. Yes, I remember that now. Your well-being is of paramount importance, so do not take it for granted. Without it, nothing else really matters. Your affirmation for this card is, <clears throat> I take time each day to relax. I make time each day to nurture my spirit. I connect spiritually to a place of love inside my heart. I find peace within. I am light. I am love. Beautiful. And then finally, we have card number 42. Sacred Earth Mother. Is this? No, okay. Here we go. Quote, we travel the endless corridors of our mind until one day we find a pathway that leads us to our heart, end quote. Who you truly are has nothing to do with your personality or your achievements, successes, or failures. 
the, quote, you, you think you are, is an actor playing a role that your soul has chosen. The essence of you is, quote, soul, quote, light, with no beginning or end. You are an eternal spark of pure creativity, unlimited potential that yearns to be expressed and fulfilled. Your potential is your destiny. It awaits your call. Trust your heart and apply its love and wisdom to all you do. In this way, all you create or do will be a true expression of your soul. It is through expressing your truth that you create things of lasting value. Be true to you. And your affirmation is, I am in essence light. I am in essence soul. I am pure creative potential. I am guided by my heart. I apply love and wisdom to all I say and do. <sighs> That's beautiful, you guys. So there you have it. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for following along with me on this journey for so long. Don't worry, I'm not going away forever. Um, but I do need to take some time and get settled in Puerto Rico. Ah, it's really happening, you guys. Okay, well, I love you. I'm going to miss you. Happy hump day. Happy hump day. And I look forward to connecting with you guys again for our next cup of coffee. Whenever we have our next cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, take care. Mwah! Bye.